Good morning, St. Francis, and good morning, people of God. It is Friday, the 14th day of January, 2022. Friday of the first week in ordinary time, the first week of the year. Coming to you on another chilly morning, although it's going to warm up to the stay stage to the 50s today, from the front of our chapel, St. Mary the Angels Chapel here on our campus, a chapel that has kind of remained dormant going on almost two years come March. Uh, so hopefully we will get back in here. There's been a very few sparse um, celebrations that have taken place here in the chapel, but it has remained dark uh, since May of 2020. So uh, we need to get back in here eventually. Um, whenever I'm able to do uh, morning masses uh, in the uh, large church, um, it's it's rather um, unnerving to make this long, silent procession down the main aisle of our church uh, building uh, for, for, for weekday mass. So uh, hopefully we can get back into here uh, the more intimate uh, setting that the chapel was uh, designed and built for, for our daily masses. Um, uh, today, as we continue uh, descending from the height of Christmas, uh, we hear in the book of Samuel uh, about the people of Israel's desire for a king. Um, and this, again, now Samuel has succeeded Eli um, as the spiritual leader of the Israelites, um, as, again, the understanding uh, that God had originally designed uh, for, for Israel to be uh, that one of the priests would be the one to lead the people, because that would be the one who would be able to interpret God's will for the people. Um, however, uh, the people not happy with the leadership of uh, the, the priests, um, and especially because of the defeats by the Philistines and everything else like that, now desire a king. Uh, and they go to Samuel and they want one. And Samuel basically says, well, you know what? If you're going to get a king, he's going to become selfish, arrogant. He's going to grasp things that are not his. He's going to take the best for himself. Everybody's going to be miserable. And yet the people say, but we want a king. We want a king. And now God permits them to have a king. Again, one of these kinds of questions about who knows best about life. Is it us or is it God? Do we want things for our own self, thinking that that's going to help us? Or do we want to listen to what it is that God has uh, in store for us, what God wants for us, what God desires for us? Um, again, it's a very, very thin line sometimes between trying to understand what it is that we want and trying to understand what it is that God wants for us. So, but to be able to listen to that, to be able to understand, to be able to receive what it is that God desires for us, enables us not to make the mistakes that our own limited mind, our own limited limited wills, you know, sometimes create for us, sometimes, you know, create in our lives uh, for us. Um, in today's gospel, we have uh, another, again, another miraculous uh, healing. Uh, the man who is uh, a paralytic, whose friends lower him down into the house, uh, uh, in, into a house by taking off the roof, which probably the homeowner was not very happy about, uh, but they wanted their friend to be able to be healed. Um, and Jesus does this. However, it is a Sabbath. And there are those who basically say that he should not be doing such things on a Sabbath, but those priests and those lawyers and those scribes and what have you. And Jesus says, okay, you know, if you're not going to, if I'm not going to, and because Jesus says that the this man's sins are forgiven him. Um, now, again, the connection of sins with the paralysis is, 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 is tenuous at best. It is not the reason for the man's paralysis. But again, Jesus is trying to show, again, God's love and God's mercy uh, for people. Uh, but instead, because the Pharisees and the scribes object to him forgiving sins, especially because only God can do that, he says, well, it's easier to say, um, you know, get up and walk or your sins are forgiven. So I'm going to say get up and walk. And the man does just that. Again, this whole understanding, give the simplest way is sometimes the best way with God. The simplest way of approaching things, the simplest way of understanding things, the simplest way of receiving things is the, sometimes the best way with God. We complicate things. We make things difficult. We pr pr create all kinds of barriers and all kinds of obstacles to understanding God's wonder and God's joy and God's glory in this world and in ourselves. We have to stop putting up such barriers. We have to stop trying to think life is more complicated than it is. The simplest way is God's way. The simplest way is what God has in store for us, what God has designed for us. Let us always embrace that and let that show us new life and new hope in this world. And may the Lord give you his peace.